Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. It's a beautiful day, and I've got a bunch of little things to do. I've got to move the cattle to new grass. I've got to check on the state of our hay fields because hay season's getting close. And I've got to let the little pigs out of their hut into their pasture. I thought I would bring you along with me, and while I'm doing those things, give you a late spring farm tour. So, let's go. Well, 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 what do we have here? Well, it looks like some little piglets found their own way out. And they're already rooting up back here. It's time to take down the wood anyway, so I guess that's a nice way to gradually introduce them to the pasture when they make a breakout on their own. Alright guys, out you go, join your mates. This batch of pigs is a bunch of frady cats. They climb the wall every time I put my head in the pen to feed them. Hillary's working on cleaning out the chicken's winter house, so I'm going to pull the tractor down so she can get going on that. And I guess it's manure season around here. I mean, when is it not manure season when you have so many cattle? So I've been spending quite a bit of time loading the winter pack out of the barn from the cattle. And I've still got the pig's bit winter bedding pack to do. We have big plans for the chickens winter house this year. I only hope we have the time to get to them. Hillary's cleaning this mess out bit by bit and this is two years worth of accumulated chicken manure mixed with wood shavings. It's not bad to shovel. There's just a lot of it and we have to take it out by hand and put it into the bucket at the end of the barn, pick up the bucket, take it to the manure pile, back and forth and back and forth. Our plan for this house is, once we get all this manure out, to put in some clean stone as a base and then pour a concrete slab. And the reason we want to do that, Benjamin the turkey over there, the reason we want to do that is because we always have problems with rats and eventually weasels coming through the rat holes, coming under, and we lose a bunch of chickens almost every year because of that. So pour a concrete slab, weasel and rat proof, makes it easier to clean because we can scrape the slab with a shovel. And then on the sides of this house, which now are just six foot worth of chicken wire to keep the chickens from pecking a hole in the plastic, run three feet of uh, metal roofing up the side going all the way along, and then use the heavier woven plastic for the roof that's got like a 10 or 15 year warranty, so we won't have to worry about that for quite a while. That way we've protected the floor, we've got the sides going up that the rats and the weasels can't get in, hopefully they won't climb it and chew holes through the plastic, but it'll be a lot more secure than what we have right now but it's a lot of work for Hillary. So just around the corner from the Lang Hens winter house, we've got our brooder house and it's full of chicks right now and will be so for the rest of the summer. We've got two batches of Cornish cross meat birds in here. This one is about a week old and this one is about three weeks old and we're gonna be bringing those out to the field tomorrow. And then in the end, Big Bay, we've got replacement layers. Was well, supposed to be 150, but like everything with COVID, the mail was late and we lost a bunch in the mail. I think we're down to like 120 now. Mixture of breeds, Bard Rock, Ericana, and Buff Orpingtons. Heading out to our corner field, we've got poultry out here. We've got our laying hens and we've got four boxes of broilers out with two more coming tomorrow. So we'll be at our full capacity of six boxes of broilers running in the field for the rest of summer. We've got 280 laying hens out here and they were all eating at the troughs, but of course when I came in they're chicken, so they ran under the wagon. They're approaching peak egg production right now. They'll keep going up till the summer solstice on June 21st and then we'll see a gradual decline through the winter solstice, December 21st. But now we're enjoying having a lot of eggs and selling a lot of eggs at market, which is a major part of our income. For broilers, as I said, we're running four pens right now, two to be added tomorrow. This grass is getting really tall, knee high. Once the grass gets above six or eight inches, they tromp more of it down than they eat. So we try and keep them on grass that's shorter than this. The problem is haymaking season hasn't come yet. So 
we have to let this grow. The other issue with the tall grass is it makes pulling these pens ahead in the morning a pain in the butt because they catch on the grass and you've got to lift them up way high to get over the grass and the chickens don't want to move as readily when there's tall grass in front of them. So originally my plan for the day was to come out with the haybine and mow a swath in front of them so that they'd get out of this tall grass but then I had the brainstorm of right there's the paddock that we're grazing the cattle on and they're ready to move. So we're gonna pull these pens right through as they work along a spot ahead each day and pretty soon we'll be in the short grass and things will work out perfectly for once. Usually I do have to mow a part of this field because the grass gets ahead of us before haymaking season and I take that grass that I've mowed, bale it green and feed it to the bulls and they love it as a treat. What a difference between the areas that the cows have grazed and the areas that they haven't. This one's just about ready to make hay as soon as we get weather that cooperates. But this is grazed way too far for my liking. You can see how far they've taken this down and I don't like it, but we don't really have a choice because grass is still lagging behind what it would normally be at this time of year. So we've been leaving the cows on paddocks longer than we probably should. They're moving off of this one today and we're gonna move them on to the first field of the second round of grazing. So this one they've grazed once that they're going on to and we're going to put it on it again and hopefully the grass will start catching up to us. One of the things I think of often when I'm making these videos is farming is never perfect and I try to show that on our channel. There's always some challenge we're facing. In this case it's the speed of the grass growth. I see these farms on YouTube where everything looks perfect and I think to myself it's not perfect. These farms have warts too. They just don't show them all that much. No farm is perfect. Mother Nature is always throwing you curveballs and you're never going to get everything perfectly right. So you just have to roll with it and that's what we do. On my way to the other field, this is a field that they grazed about three weeks ago and you can see that it's starting to come back. This is the laneway that they've been grazing right now and this has been resting for three weeks. I put a heavy dose of compost on this and it's coming back it's just taking time. We need a whole bunch of rain is what we need and some nice cool days. So here are the Dexters hanging out. We have 35 now. We're up to 10 calves. We're not expecting the last two for a couple months because they're coming out of a couple heifers that got bred late. As the weather gets warmer they spend more and more time here in the grove in the shade and they go out to the field to eat but they rest in here. Hi hey, ladies and gentlemen. And little ones. Hey, Carrie. Hi, Sammy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Can't hit you with my coffee. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Lots of little ones. So I got to go turn off the fencer and then we'll move them to the next field. They know something good is coming. Alright, here we go. Don't knock over the camera. Usually it takes a while for the calves to get the idea of the move. So they're all hanging out on the hill here. So this is the grass we're putting them on to. Recovered well, about a month since we put them out to grazing. Lots of clover coming in here. A lot of orchard grass. This is one of our oldest fields that probably got planted, I don't know, 15 years ago. And for a time it was fallow, it didn't get worked. So the weeds grew up in it and I've been grazing it now for seven years. And gradually the clovers come back in good. 
orchard grass is coming back in. We lost the alfalfa that was growing in this field because it just got crowded out back when we weren't using it. And it's gradually coming back, but it takes good grazing. And so with this field, I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't get overgrazed and that we encourage that sort of regeneration of the soil that happens with proper grazing and not overgrazing. And of course the cattle got to come and check me out because, you know, what am I doing in the middle of their food? Here's one of the steers that was going to the butcher this summer. We've got three going and he's starting to fill out. Let's take a look. Hey buddy. He's starting to get that heavy walk, especially in his hind end. Here's another one of the steers that's going. He hasn't filled out as much as the first one. Well, he's got that nice walk though. But see how exposed the tail is? There's no fat pad around the tail. His brisket's still real light. You'll always see some loose skin up front, but if you look underneath between the legs and you see that start to fill in, that tells me he's fattening up. He's got a while to go yet. Looks like Hillary got the kids fed and she's out starting to clean out this now. What a big job, huh? Yeah, our chickens poop a lot. <laughs> So do our kids. <laughs> yeah, that they do. <laughs> ah, we'll get it done eventually. For the last month, our two bulls have been stuck in the barn here because we don't want them breeding the cows too early. And they were grazing right behind the winter yard, so I didn't really want to let the bulls out because it tortures them when they can get close to the cows, but they can't get to the cows. So now that the cows are over on the other side in the other field, I'm going to let the bulls out into the winter yard so they can get some exercise because they've been just sitting in here eating all the time. They need to get their legs under them. The bulls will spend their summer vacation in here until late August when it's time for breeding season to start. They need to stay, stay separate from the cows. So this isn't the best situation. There's not a lot to eat in here. In fact, almost nothing. We'll feed them hay and water and they have mineral in the barn. And they can come out here for exercise, fresh air and sunshine. But it's not perfect. It's part of having cattle on a small farm. I don't have enough land to sequester the bulls out of sight and out of smell of the cows on pasture. So they have to stay in this winter yard with its fortified fence to keep them away from the cows. <laughs> a bull running towards you is always a little scary. And this will be how they spend most of their summer vacation, looking over the fence at the cows, wishing they were out there with them. And I can't do anything to help them. I gotta close up the gate here to their last paddock and then we'll go down and check on the hay fields. We have two fields that aren't fenced and we use them just to make hay. There's this one which is between three and four acres and then there's one way down by the hedgerow there that's about five acres. All the rest of our fields are fenced but as well as grazing them with the dexters when the grass gets ahead of us, we'll cut hay. So these are gonna be the first that I cut for first cutting because we've run the cattle over the other fields and it's starting to look ready to cut. I'll show you. First of all, you can see the height by the tractor trail that goes through it and it's getting up there. Um, things are just starting to seed out. This is orchard grass and I'll show it to you closer. This is orchard grass. You can always tell orchard grass when it seeds out because the head is actually lots of different splits with seed pods on them. Timothy will just have a straight one piece seed head. None of the Timothy is starting to seed out, but the orchard grass is. You really want to cut hay if you can at this stage where the seed head's coming out of the boot because if the hay goes to seed, its nutritional value starts to go down a lot for grass species and alfalfa as well. After alfalfa blooms, its nutritional quality starts to go down. Clover is a different story and to show you that I'm going to have to go down to the other field because I'm looking around in this field and I'm seeing a whole lot of alfalfa and a whole lot of grass, but very little clover. 
All right, this field's loaded with clover. And the reason that folks talk about clover and they say, oh my gosh, look at the clover in my grazing field or my hay field is because clover and alfalfa, the legumes, are the higher protein forage for the cattle. So it's good to have a mix. The other thing is that those legumes put nitrogen into the soil and help the whole system. They help the grass grow as well. So let's look at clover. Here's a nice patch of clover. The nice thing about clover is that unlike other grasses and legumes, once it starts blooming, its nutritional value doesn't decline because it'll start sending up new stems and just keep on blooming until you cut it. The trick with clover around here is we can't make dry hay until usually after the clover has gotten tall enough where it starts to come over on its stem and its stem lays on the ground. And then when you cut it, you can't get this stem that's laying on the ground and it winds up being left behind as residue to be picked up with second cutting after it's been dead and on the ground for quite a while and it doesn't make the greatest hay if you can't get to it in time. I love making hay. It's one of the few times where I can get out the equipment and actually do some tractor work on our farm. Our farm doesn't involve a lot of tractor work so it's nice to do. It's also stressful because usually we're working in a tight weather window and we have to trust that our equipment holds up and that we get everything done before the rain comes. And it seems like it's always coming just as we're baling hay. That's it for my farm tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Everything is looking so green and lush. It's a great time to be a farmer. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.